My traumatized babies and mentally ill Barbies. Today we are talking about Babel by R.F. Kong and I. I have had this finished for a while and I don't want to talk about it. I really don't. I don't even know. So let's go ahead and start with a plot overview. Babel is about a young man named Robin Swift. This is not his real name. This is his immigrant name. So he is half Chinese, half English. He's originally from Canton. And the story opens with all of Robin's known family and his maid passing away due to cholera. Right before he dies, an Englishman comes and heals him with a bar of silver. And then the Englishman takes Robin with him to England where he comes to be this man whose name is Professor Lovell. Robin comes to be this man's ward. Just through the passage of the story, you come to understand that Professor Lovell is actually Robin's father, but of course he is not actually going to claim Robin as his son because he has another family, like an English family. And he just goes over, like overseas and has babies. And this is specifically because he's having these babies because he works at Oxford University in a tower called Babel. And this is like a fantasy magical translation center where they translate um, just they do regular translation work, but then there is a magical system in which two words, one in one language and one in another, are written on opposing sides of the silver. The silver is the substrate, and um, this all makes like good magical sense, like if you're looking at magical history. And what's going on is the magic is produced. It's essentially a very, very elegant union of opposites. What is lost in translation between the two words that are called match pairs then produce a certain sort of energy that like resonates within the silver and the silver can then manifest it onto materiality. All that makes sense to me and I thought it was interesting. I thought it was simple. I thought it was elegant. I didn't have a problem with it because the point of the book is not really the magical system and how magic is done the book is way more about colonialism and racism, and we follow Robin from a very young boy under Professor Lovell's care and his journey into his first year at Oxford and then getting into the systems of oppression that are operated through Babel itself and also internationally and how British trade is essentially like drug running in China and how all of this is under threat of war and England has all of the power specifically because of its monopoly on silver and on translation. Without Babel, without the tower, uh, England would have nothing uh, or at least they would not have the power that they currently do. So that's what the story is about. And so I was sitting there from the very beginning, just before we even get started with all of that. If there is a tower called Babel in your book, that is Chekhov's gun. If the tower does not fall, but if we don't blow that shit up by the end of the book, I'm like, I'm over it, I'm done, I'm not here for it. I always forget to say this. Spoilers, um, intense spoilers. I only ever give spoiler reviews and I'm not, I don't separate it out in the videos. So just like be prepared. Be prepared to spoiler everything. And by the way, let me just get this out of the way before we even get into anything else. I do not recommend that anybody reads this book. It was that bad, which I am so sorry to say because R.F. Kong is a really great writer. I started off really just enjoying her authorial voice. So if she ended up writing a different sort of book entirely, I would be super interested in reading that. But I'll kind of get into that at the end of this because this is one of those reviews where I'm going to end up making like a wild statement about like the author themselves and that is always a hazard. Typically when I'm going to make a sweeping criticism about a book, 
about something being present, like racism in that the book is, there's a difference between a book about racism and a book that is racist and that typically comes from intentionality. I can write something very intentional about a specific character being racist towards another character. However, if I don't recognize what racism looks like, what misogyny looks like, what fat phobia looks like, all the things, right? All the ists and isms. If I haven't examined that within myself, when I write something, my unconscious biases will tend to show up in the text. And when that happens, that is when I will tend to say, well, I think the text comes across fat phobic. And I don't tend to say, I think the author's fat phobic because like, it's just making wild assumptions about authors tends to be fairly like, Bleh. like it's not really great. <laughs> but in this case, I'm gonna do it, which might be a mistake on my part, but I'm just like, it's like that bad. And the thing is the reason why I'm saying it like I'm saying it, the way I'm couching it in these terms about the author is because I actually think what's going on with the author is unhealthy for the author and also for the audience. Like it's to the point where I'm just like, I will not participate in this. I will not purchase any more books from this author. I will not read anything else from this author, not for a number of years, depending on how they progress, because I believe it is actually harmful. Not that RF Kong is racist or anything like that, absolutely not. But just based on what I've read in this book, and then looking at some other reviews from multiple other people about Yellowface and other stuff, I'm just like, no, absolutely not. This person needs to like take a break because this is weird. It feels weird and that's why I don't like it because I can feel it in the energy coming off of the book. And that's why I'm so like repulsed by everything because to me, the energy is bad. It's bad and I'm going to explain my ideas as to why it's so bad. The best thing about Babel is RF Kong's writing. Her voice, the way she constructs things. When I was reading the first part of this, I was like, oh, like there are some really awful things going on right now, but it's like the way she's describing this and that and the other, it's like her voice is like sinking into like a very warm bath. It's very vibes, it's very atmosphere, it's very fantastic and in the beginning, I think she uses that, her the softness and warmth of her voice very effectively to contrast it with the violence of the racism when it emerges. Because it's sort of like the bit in the beginning of the book is that you're being lulled into this sort of like, oh, this is so wonderful, how amazing. And then she hits you fairly early on with something really freaking horrible. And it's very effective because what it made me do was go, oh yeah, stupid. Don't even, don't like, it's the exact like things. Like don't get confused. Yes, it looks like this. These people are sociopaths and they do not care about this person. They consider this person an animal and the whole thing is disgusting. And there's no way out for um, Robin as a character for the most part. What I also very much enjoyed about Babel is that um, once Robin gets into Oxford, he is dealing with a cohort of his fellow students so we have Robin, who is from Canton, half Chinese, half English. We have Rami, who I believe is from Bengal, so he's Indian. We have Victoire, who is French, but I believe she's originally from Haiti. She is black, Rami's brown, Victoire is black. And then there is Letty, who is English. She is a white woman. And all of these characters are from diverse backgrounds, right? But we don't have an instance where our diverse characters are all good and our sort of teachers, um, the, the adults, the people who are the most active in the violence of the oppression being, well, they are kind of all bad. They are caricatures, because here's the thing. The characterization in Babel is atrocious, but Especially at the beginning, it's it's a little bit less noticeable because you're dealing more with Robin, who is the most well-rounded out of everyone naturally. But at the beginning when he's dealing with his friends, it's not that bad. And also I liked that they were stepping on each other's toes culturally. I liked that like they were all trying to negotiate each other's differences and it was clumsy. They weren't all perfectly like 
egalitarian and every they were making mistakes with each other but as the story progresses it gets more and more and more of a caricature these are not characters these are political points of view and these are types of people so rami is like that guy from india from bengal victoire is that girl from haiti who experienced nasty nasty oppression and awful shit in france um and letty is that white woman she's that white woman she is the karen of the group and i was kind of with this book all the way until a particular moment where um letty is trying to convince the crew to go to this ball um this ball is a big deal but of course like she is not as our resident karen right she is not understanding that her position as an english white woman is very very different from robin rami and victoire's position and so because she's like not thinking about like it comes across at the time that you're reading it that she's not thinking about it but then later on when victoire kind of reveals some things it's kind of like mm, i don't know letty's kind of a sociopath as well i'm not sure what's happening here um it, but because it was done so poorly it sort of felt like everybody was turning on a dime it's like everything was fine and then it's really really not fine and then like the like this person went from like kind of okay if problematic to like freaking evil and the thing is it was so easy to see once you get to a certain point in the book i was like oh letty's the weak link letty's the weak link there's no way if she actually does what like she is being set up to do that is a lie this character would not do this this character would turn on them and of course she does which is way more the believable thing when like bodies start hitting the floor i'm like absolutely not once bodies start hitting the floor once we're telling somebody you can die you can go to jail all of this stuff you are going to lose all of your privilege most people okay who are benefiting from that privilege are going to be like you know maybe i'm gonna like it was all fun and games when it was just like some talk it was all fun and games but like here's the thing we can only take that so far right we can't actually have a revolution we can't actually do that we've got to go through all the official channel and, blah, and so when it starts ha when the shit hits the fan i'm just like there's no way there's no way that letty's turning on a dime like this everybody else here does not have the same sort of privilege that she has and so when she turned I was like okay thank you because like that's not happening today like that's like a freaking miracle but again it, it comes across really weird because like these characters are stereotypes except for Robin and um when we got to the party I'm coming all the way back when we got to this party I ended up being so disgusted this is where I was just like you know what fuck this book i don't like this i don't like what's going on because what happens at the party is like letty and victoire are kind of having fun ish for a little while victoire is very uncomfortable with the entire experience she doesn't want to do it at all she wants to stay home whatever and letty's like oh no like it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine like blah, blah, blah. and it's fine for a little while the guys however have to like work as like servants essentially for a while to even get into the party so they have to be servants and then they can't actually like letty wants them the, the guys to have fun with her and like dance and all this stuff and rami's just like yeah i literally can't do that dumb bitch because she's not like he's like if i dance with you that means that somebody might try to kill me and i don't feel like dealing with that so she's just like oh but like rami and because she's like oh my god i fucking hate this book and so um at this party of course it all ends poorly because it has to right like the girls end up being like the butt of some very very nasty jokes which i'm like not going into it's disgusting it's meant to be disgusting and then the guys have to step in and then they all kind of vacate the party is very like for me it was upsetting to read so i know it's going to be traumatizing for other people who have actually like been through this stuff in other minor ways or explicitly have had this stuff happen to them because what happens at the party i guarantee you still happens today like that form of like really really nasty egregious racism and misogyny depending on where you are happens all over especially when you're much younger 
So when I was reading that, I was just like, first of all, like, I was just like, well, I know, like, I'm supposed to be horrified by this or like disgusted by it and whatever. But as I was sitting there reading it, I ended up getting a lot angrier because what I felt like was I was reading these diverse characters, right? It felt like the only thing, I'm upset talking about it, it felt like the only thing those characters were there to do was demonstrate disgusting racism to me. It felt weird to read because I was just like, we could be like in the imaginal realm, right? right? In the imaginal realms, on paper, on this canvas, like it's our world. This is what we're still having our diverse characters do? For what? For what conversation? The conversation that is going on in this book is extremely basic. Like, I feel like anybody who picks up a book like this is already aware. They've already done the work, at least like to this, like this is like, I'm so fucking mad because it's just like, to me, and I know this is crazy, okay, but I have a magical frame. You created these detailed, relatively detailed thought forms of black and brown people and mixed race people to torture them. To torture them for like, to educate, like, they already had this education and not in this way. Like, it's almost like it's a touch weirdly inhumane to me and like that's just my perception but I was just like this feels fucking weird it feels fucking weird to read I kind of don't understand what is being said here and what the intention is but anyone else like the type of person who would be mad like I'm saying actually mad about the way like white people are being represented in this book would have to be like extremely racist white people like it would have to be I was gonna say wealthy white people but that's a different thing that's something different um, about who this book was written for and also why it feels fucking weird and why I don't want to participate in the shit, especially knowing what I know about Yellowface now, which is that it is a Reese Witherspoon book pick. Like, I know probably no one's gonna understand what I mean about this, but it's insidious. Like, it, the energy is fucking bad, man. And why the energy is bad is because, like, the only person to me who would actually really like something like this, would feel really good about reading this, is a very, very wealthy, liberal white woman who would feel like, oh, I just did something. I did the anti-racism. I did the decolonial. Like, I've done it, guys. I've done it. And so it's just very fucking bizarre. So I'm not surprised that Yellowface is a Reese Witherspoon book pick because when I saw that I was like oh well maybe um because it was before I read Babel when I saw Yellowface was on there I was like oh damn like maybe like Reese Witherspoon's book picks have actually gotten a lot better because the only other book that I read on Reese Witherspoon's book pick was forced upon me in a book club that I am no longer a part of like, this was years ago they had me read where the crawdads sing like racist that was a minstrel show was what that was and so i was just like fuck that i'm not reading because it was exactly the type of thing and it was exactly the type of person that i was trying to communicate this to at the book club i was like listen this is very racist because a b c and d and these people were just like you're being ridiculous you're being ridiculous and then i went online and like a ton of other people of color and other people were just like this book is fucking racist as fuck and i was like Okay, so I'm not crazy. I'm actually not crazy. I do know what I'm talking about. And for me, there is something weirdly similar going on in Babel, and I would guess also Yellowface. Um, it's like a performative sort of writing that is meant for the benefit of wealthy white liberal women and their associates. I like, I guess, like, I don't know. What this is also doing is like criticizing like Oxford, the systems of oppression that are like present in academia, while at the same time, RF Kong has like multiple very fancy degrees from all of these universities. And that doesn't like 
eliminate her from criticizing this stuff, but it's sort of like the exact same very extreme privilege that allowed you to write this book and get it published and have the success that you do on top of her being talented, okay? I'm not saying she's not, but like it, it's like you, you're, you're not actually, you're just upholding the thing. Like you would have to directly, and that's another thing why I don't like this is because like the only books that I would want to read about like any type of issue from RF Kong in the future, like she would actually have to write a book that was just titled Fuck Those White Bitches. I'll read that book, Fuck Those White Bitches, or like you can make it flowery if you want to, but I want a book that is directly, and people would argue, I know, that Yellowface is that book. Yellowface is not that book. It is still like indirect because the thing is, if she actually wrote like the direct book, Fuck Those White Bitches, those wealthy white bitches who publish her and give her her money and everything else would not publish, I, I guarantee you, because it's the same exact thing that's going on in Babel. We can only take this so far. And if I take it further, I would also destroy myself. And if you have read Babel, you know what I'm talking about, because that is what it comes down to at the end of the story. And I'm not saying it's not realistic or whatever, but the, like we are in like a hallway of fucking mirrors with this shit. And all it is is toxic energy being reflected back to us because I'm just like, this is a sickness. This is a sickness. And it's like, we're all participating in the sickness. Okay. And like people would be like, oh, well, that's what RF Kong wants to point out, except she's not doing anything real. She's not doing anything real. She's just profiting off of it and then being upset in an indirect way while still tap dancing for the same people that gave her the, I'm saying gave her the degree. She earned the degrees, okay? From those same systems that are run by those same people. What is that? What really is that? That's a, a bunch of shit is what it is and I'm not reading it. I am not reading it. It's like the two girls, one cup of fucking wealthy white people racism, but hey, it's okay. This is like our, I forgot what it's called in The Handmaid's Tale, where they're like upholding this system and they're keeping the women from like actually doing an uprising by throwing them a man every now and again for them to rip apart. And so that makes everything okay. That is what these books are. Fuck it now. I don't want to participate. Unless we are actually saying, fuck those white people, then I'm not participating. And if we're not saying fuck those white people, the other book that I will read from R.F. Kuang is um, just a very cozy, like cottage core type of thing with just vibes, just like vibes. And like, if she can actually write a character, because I'm not sure that she can, um, is bad. If she can actually write a character or a couple of characters that are actually characters and not mouthpieces, okay, or stereotypes, um, and it's just a pleasant little, like nothing happens. It's a very legends and lattes type thing. I'm here for that book as well. Other than that, no, I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not doing any of that. I am not participating in any of that nonsense because that's why the energy is coming off as so disgusting to me because it's just like, it is just a feedback loop of a nastiness and I'm telling you it is bad for somebody's mental health for mine certainly um and so what the hell else do I want to talk about with this because like I'm telling you I this is why I didn't want to talk about it because it's just like fuck this fuck it I'm like it's a waste of my time I'm not doing it today representation I actually appreciate Babel for giving me an opening to talk about bad representation, bad diverse representation, but not in a way that is like actively, like, because typically when we're talking, we're criticizing bad rep, we're going, oh, this person tried to do something and actually it's like very racist or whatever. I would say that while RF Kong has written stereotypes here, she not like this, that's not any racist that like it's just but it is bad writing it is bad representation she didn't write people she wrote caricatures and that is deserving of criticism so we can like i enjoy something being bad rep 
without it being like to me i don't know that it's actively harmful someone else might feel a certain type of way especially with like victoire but to me like the point of the book is to like illustrate all of this nastiness but because it's done like so childishly so like it's like it's just grossly immature there is nothing being said here it comes off it's like it's offending me not because it's racist it's offending me because it's bad like that's the only thing i'm talking about here so can we start talking about representation as bad like what i'm saying is if like a white woman or a white man had done the same thing if they had like made the same faux pas would that then be considered racism um or just like ah, this is bad rap like we see the intent here but this person did not quite get it like can we move conversations that way when it deserves to be that way? Because that tends to be more of like what I see from people who end up having poor rep is that their hearts are very much in the right place and they're doing their absolute best, but it's still not like, it's still not good writing. Um, and so I think that very much deserves to be called out. Um, or criticized but I don't know like because it just seems like when we have somebody doing like poor rep or like awkwardly done rep it's just like we're coming for the throats you know what I'm saying and so like I don't know if there's any distinction to be made there or if we can start getting more nuanced in the way that we talk about poor representation and probably it's going on already and I'm just not like looking at the right channels but that's what I found interesting about this that this bad rap isn't like something to like cancel something. Like, none of this is like cancelable is what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm not participating in it because I think it's fucking weird, but I don't think RF Kong needs to be like canceled. Like that's weird. Um, and I saw like, never mind. Also a big, I, this is gonna sound like so stupid after everything that I've just been screaming about. There is one egregious, like to me it's an error. It's not really an error, but like it happened at one point in the novel, when I think it actually would have been better if this particular thing had happened at a later point in the novel, and that is, I'm fairly certain, okay, because it stuck out to me when I read it, and this is a book about language, okay, so if you think it's a mistake, it's not a mistake. This was intentional, which is why, to me, that makes it, like, more of a mistake, because this was done with intentionality, that makes it double, triple bad writing. The one time that a curse word actually appears on the page, it is being directed at Letty, our white Karen, and Robin is like thinking, I don't think he actually says it, but in his mind, he calls her a bitch. So it's very much like this, this sentence is not written on the page, but to me, it's in the subtext. It, like there's this confrontation going on and it is after Letty turns on them. And I'm not gonna say how she turns on them, but she does he it's essentially like fuck you white bitch in that moment but the thing is it's not then that's not explicitly written there i'm just saying it's in the energy okay and it's like validly in the energy but the thing is when he calls her a bitch in his mind on the page it it's like wrong it's happening at the wrong time and it's also weird because robin reserves his ire like the most direct like thought expression of his ire. He's calling her a bitch in his mind. He's directing this at Letty. And this might be because like Letty is at least a little bit more on his level, um, which does make a sort of sense. But like his own, like, his, like Letty is like that version of a Karen sociopath or whatever. But like the men that Robin is dealing with are like 80 million, 50 bajillion times worse. Like they are monstrous. They are monsters. They are serial killers. They are genocidal drug dealers, okay? And they like be, like Robin has experienced direct like physical harm from these people. And he lives under the threat of that like every single day, even if he's not directly thinking about it. So when he finally takes a stand against his own father in an act of violence, He's like very distressed about this and he doesn't like, he doesn't dehumanize his, he doesn't dehumanize the people who are like most actively dehumanizing him. 
he saves the dehumanizing language and the dehumanizing thoughts for Letty, but also he does not act as violently against her. But I found that now that I'm like parsing that out, I'm feeling a little bit softer about it because it's like what's being illustrated are two forms of violence. So the direct violence that Robin takes against like the kind of direct oppressors. And it's not that Letty isn't a direct oppressor, it's just that being a woman, she's kind of like a step down, but she's still supporting the system. And so while he doesn't take direct physical violence at her, it's like thought violence and word violence. Kind of makes sense, but it felt weird. Like when I read it, I was just like, this is kind of weird because that was very intentional, him calling her a bitch. And um, it also potentially has something to do with Robin's relationship with Rami and Letty's relationship with Rami that could be adding to this. I'm also not going to get into that. Um, it, like if you super want to read the book, like you can find out what I'm talking about, but I, like I don't recommend the book. It comes off when it happens. It's just like, Ro like Robin throughout this book, and this is very believable, okay? I believe this about Robin. I thought Robin as a character was fairly believable, and then it just got ridiculous because the character is like, not because Robin is ridiculous, but because like, R.F. Cog is bad at writing character. She's bad at it. Um, so what he starts doing later on in the book, it's like, what the fuck is this? Um, and it's because he has been so docile throughout the book. It's like he's, he puts a toe in every once in a while to get kind of involved in, um, in like ending the systems of oppression. But he's occupying kind of the same space that Letty is. And it's the space that Rami and Victoire cannot occupy because they do not pass for white. They do not pass for white. Letty is white and Robin passes, depending on the person. If somebody doesn't know, they don't know that he is Chinese. Um, so he also has a certain amount of privilege in this space that the others don't. He kind of like flirts with the idea of like ending systemic oppression, but then he's also struggling with the giving up of his privilege. He is in a situation where he actually has no family. I don't think Victoire does either, to be honest with you. Remy does. And Letty does, but Victoire and Robin, which they're the ones who are still standing at the end, so makes sense. They don't. And so Robin is always kind of like, well, I have like I have so much to lose and blah blah blah. But it's very, very frustrating to read because that goes on. Him in this weirdo kind of position of being like, oh, but this and oh, but that and oh, but we are cogs in the system of genocidal imperialism. And it's just like you know, this is a fantasy book. We can actually just blow it up at the start. We don't have to wait till the end. We can do it right now. We can do it right now. The whole book should have been about Griffin and the Hermes Society. Fuck Babel, okay? Like if I, like it upsets me that we can't even have the fucking revolution on the page, dude. Like we can't, we can't just blow the fucking shit up on the page. Like, come on, like, let's just, let's just fucking have an actual like alternate timeline fantasy where we blow all the shit up. Like, like maybe that's the midpoint turn and then we're dealing with the fallout afterwards. But no, we can't, we can't do any of that. Um, that's like, to me, that's like way more cathartic, but they're like, oh no, but that's not realistic though. I don't care about realism in a fantasy novel. I mean, just enough so that I believe like the world, right? But what that is telling me is that y'all or like the people who really enjoy this and potentially the author themselves do not believe we can actually ever have any form of actual revolution. They don't, not even in your imagination, bro. Like not even in your imagination do you believe this. That's upsetting. Um, if, if true, okay, because like, to me, it's like, at le like, that, that's, that's, that's actually the first step, okay? That's actually the first step, is writing the story and telling yourself the story. That's why they want to ban books and burn them, okay? That's why. So, to me, I'm just like, can we just, can we not be pussies at least on the page? Um, apparently not though, at least not if you want to have a successful book, I'm sorry. Uh, financially successful. You'd have to go with like an indie publisher or whatever for something like that. And you know that, that, no. I don't even know where the fuck, oh right. So here's the thing with the bitch. There is a point more towards the end of the book where Letty ends up returning to the group after she's like betrayed them, right? 
and she's attempting to like negotiate for all of their own sake and she's trying to paint herself as like I am the adult in the room and you are all fallen under the sway of these guerrilla terrorists but what can we really expect because you know you are not white and you, it's that shit and so when she comes back and starts doing that I was like this is where the white bitch <laughs> This is it here. This is the moment where it's like it would have made radically more sense for me to for Robin to just be like, fuck you, bitch. But just but <laughs> it felt out of place when she turned on them. When she came back and tried to do her little song and dance, I was like, here's where the bitch would have landed right there. This is where it should have been. So it's not particularly of I don't think it was bad for Arif Kwong to put like the bitch in there it just feels very weird and it feels weird because to me it feels like it comes too early for where Robin's character is at the time and also because it is the only like direct curse word that is in the book it like that's gonna have a lot of power to it so to me where it's like to me falling in the wrong place it, it it's very like jarring and just like it's not having the impact that i think it was designed to have by um that act of violence against letty it felt more natural it felt more organic after they have separated from letty for a while and then she tries to come back and do the white woman tap dance it, it to me that's where i would have put it if i was doing this um, but I wouldn't have, I would have blown the shit out. I, if this was me, I, like, I wouldn't have written it. Like, I would have been writing about Griffin, okay? I would have been writing about Griffin blowing the shit up. I just would. But what's interesting to me is that of the political points of view that were represented, when things were being mirrored back to me, I'm, like, kind of a mix of Anthony and Griffin. I'm, like, Anthony with a touch of Griffin because I actually, um, I actually, my beliefs about any sort of revolution, any sort of big cultural change, and this is gonna align with like what I've been talking about with the Jacks, right? With the Yellow Jack and the rest of the um, four Jacks. You cannot have a radical change. A revolution is a radical change. You cannot have that without some form of violence. It's just that you have to pick, like you get to, you can't opt out of the violence, not to me anyway. You have to have it, it has to come on some level, but you get to choose. Well, it, you consensually choose it, it's a co-creation. And the thing is, if you have more people who want like material violence, and that would mean like a war, right? Um, people actually dying, like blood actually being spilled, um, that's one form of violence. And then another form of violence is verbal violence. Um, it is a like a combat of words and ideas um, and tearing someone down intellectually. And that is demonstrated academically. That's going on all the time at Babel, intellectual violence. And to me, while that's not, um, like obviously that's not something I wanna engage in every day. When it comes to revolution, if I was going to choose my violence, I would prefer intellectual violence over real, when I'm saying real, I mean like to the body violence, we are sacrificing lives. And like it's even worse now because our skin for the most part in America isn't even in the game. We're all having intellectual violence. However, we're outsourcing the physical violence. And when our people are involved, it's typically poor people. So that's like, okay. So to me, I'm just like, could we all, and like, it's not up, it's not, when I'm saying we get to choose, right? The nation chooses and not everybody's conscious of that. And so it's like the collective choice, it's <laughs> choose the form of your destructor. You don't know when you're making that choice. And so that's why to me, I get very, very nervous when I hear words. When October 7th happened and I was listening to NPR and I was hearing certain people talk and calling people animals and all of this stuff, I was so, like I knew then I was like, this is gonna be bad. Cause once you start hearing that, 
Once you start hearing the dehumanizing language, even just a touch of it, even just a touch of it, you got to catch it. You got to catch it quick because if that builds momentum, you're not going to be able to stop the physical violence. Once that's in motion, it's like it's got to play out. You've got to intercept it with physical violence. Something that is manifesting in material reality requires a material solution. You cannot sink your way out of that. You cannot speak your way out of it. Typically, you have to go in with your own guns and bombs. And that's awful, but it's sort of like we have it collectively decided as an international people that we're actually done with that. And I don't know how much power any one of us really has over that besides reiterating it over and over and over again. Because the revolution starts with a story. The revolution starts with words. And that's why this book upsets me so much. And it's the same thing for Yellowface. It's like, I'm gonna show you a really ugly picture of yourself. And it's like, the people who would pick up Yellowface and agree with it, who are also white women, they already have that education, okay? They already know. And also for the most part, that's the equivalent, like that is a virtue signal to me is what that is. Like giving a very, very glowing positive review to something like yellow face as like a white woman, especially is the equivalent of like, I like when some violence is going down, throwing up something on like Instagram and being like, I'm against this. I'm just, my aesthetic Instagram post is just fighting the good fight. And it's just like, <sighs> that's why, that's why this is particularly upsetting to me. I'm quite sure that like most people are gonna think like I'm in shame or like what else do I expect someone to do? We'll tell a different story. Because what this felt like to me, it felt like a little, like a colonialism ride at Disney World, babe. It felt like somebody loaded me in a car and it's like, look at this person being beaten. Look at this person being lynched. Look at this genocide. It's a small world after all. And here's the merch. Here's your little back charm. Let's get the photo. That's why it feels diseased because because it's weird. It's this weird sanitized thing that's showing you something very, very horrible. And also not really doing anything about it. And so I'm just like, I don't know how the heck I'm gonna even end this review other than to say this book was bad. And it was bad for all the reasons that I said. And I was vaguely interested in Yellow Face, but having listened to reviews from a diverse range of people, I'm not interested in any of that shit because if it made it to Reese Witherspoon's book list, it's not doing anything. Yeah, we're gonna publish a book that essentially calls us monsters. Ha ha ha. We're in on the joke. Joke's on y'all because just because you wrote that book, it doesn't mean we're gonna stop being monsters. We're just gonna publish that to make you feel a little bit better about the situation. And so I'm not reading it. I think we can tell better stories about like incorporating violence and about revolution because like I'm not gonna sit here with all this shit going on and also be fucking constipated and meek and timid on the page about blowing the fucking shit up. I'm just not because I mean, if we can't have it on paper, if we can't have it in our imaginations, we can't manifest it. And so to me, reading something like this is counterproductive to literally everything that I am about. It's weird, man, it's weird. I don't know if anybody's ever listened to Lana Del Rey, but she has a lyric in a song where she's just like, it was after people like kind of dragged her for being who she actually is. And she was like clapping back at like critics in the song and the lyric is something like, like a groupie incognito pretending to be a real singer. Babble, and I guarantee you it's yellow face too. Seriously, I'm being dead serious about this when I discuss something about an author. I would not say something about an author unless I potentially thought that by participating in whatever is going on here, we were doing some sort of direct harm potentially to RF Kong, and I believe that. I don't understand what this is. I might be totally insane and off the shits. I'm willing to accept that, but I'm going with my gut. This felt 
revolting to read and not in the way that she meant for it to be. And it's kind of this almost, not quite, but almost the same critique that I have, which is still up on the channel, if you go way back in time, for nothing but blackened teeth. We're talking about someone, and I mean R.F. Kong specifically, who is dealing with an insane, like, yes, she is, um, she's Chinese. She's got an insane amount of privilege. She, that's what, like, the amount of privilege she has is wild. And it was the same for all of the diverse characters in Nothing But Black and Teeth. So to hear them discuss certain things that they are also participating in while condemning, like, white people is sort of like, what? <laughs> like, what? You, you have a wild amount of money. You have a wild amount of skill and intelligence. Why are you choosing this? If I had that amount of wealth privilege, if I was as intelligent as R.F. Kong, if I was as skilled as her, I would not be choosing this. Like, you got the money, you got whatever, like, go do something else entirely. Why are you still tap dancing for people who aren't listening to you when you don't have to? That's my question. I feel like you can, like, once you get, like, fuck you many, I feel like you can do whatever you want. So like, why wouldn't you, I don't know, like, the, <laughs> if I ever get there, if I ever get there, I will like, let y'all know if, if you actually get like a fuck ton of money um, and a fuck ton of privilege, like more than I have, right? Because I don't have nothing, but I don't have, like, I don't have, um, like, uh, I don't have, like, I don't have this type of privilege. I don't have the privilege that was being written about in Nothing But Black and Teeth. And I just feel like for my own concept of what I want to do with my life, I just feel like like maybe you just can't get out. Maybe you just can't. Like, I don't know, because I'm not there. So I can't talk about that experience without having lived it. But um, for damn sure, I would try to get out of it and create something else entirely. Like, why not? Like, if you have fuck you money, like, can you really just not create something else entirely? Maybe I'm stupid. I could be, I can be a very, very naive optimist about these things. Um, but like I said, there is a stripe of Griffin in me that uh, keeps me from being like completely ridiculous about it. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and, and conclude this. Oh my God. But that is the review of, don't read, like, well, I mean, read it if you want to. I'm not recommending it. I'm not recommending it, period. And I'm not coming back. It depends on what she's writing. This is like, I need a five year break and see what like RF Kong does. Oh, I meant to say, I also, I think she's not even in her thirties yet. That could be the issue. And she's already a very excellent writer. So it's kind of like, I'm interested to see very much like how she develops what she's writing about like a decade from now, if I'm still around to read it and depending on what she decides to, to do. Um, and what she decides to write about. That's gonna be it, my traumatized babies and mentally ill Barbies. I've taken so much psychic damage and I feel like I'm putting it out there for y'all. So I will put a little trigger warning on this, just saying watch at your own hazard because I'm just screaming at the camera for an hour. I hope you had a better day and a better life experience or reading experience than I have recently. <laughs>